like to learn how to make this beautiful journal, keep watching. Hi everyone, my name is Tina, I'm Head of Design of Victoria Designs and today I have a tutorial for you how to make this beautiful journal. I'm going to show you how to make the cover and how to put the signatures in the cover without sewing or using elastics. I'm not sure if anyone has already used that idea, but I haven't seen it yet. By the way, if you like paper crafting like I do and you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, click on that subscribe button and you won't be sorry. And now let's get started. First I'm going to start with the cover. And for that I used chipboard. This is one millimeter thick or uh, it's about one sixteenth of an inch if you're working with inches. What you can also do is use scrap cord board like cardboard from cereal boxes and glue two layers on top of each other to get a quite stiff cover. I've cut the cardboard to size with a heavy duty uh, craft knife of course, use that. And they are five inches by seven and a quarter inch. So two of these and in centimeters these are 12 and a half approximately by 18 and a half. This piece I cut for the spine it's got the same height but the width is one inch or two and a half centimeters because that's what I chose. You can of course make it wider if you like. And the first thing I'm going to do is to make these pretty. I'm just going to use one of our papers from our shop. I printed it on regular copy paper so that's 80 grams like the normal stuff you put in your printer when you want to print something because I'm going to fold and then I want it to be smooth and not thick. Obviously this is too large but I want the writing part in the middle so I'm going to glue it down here. You know I like to use my double-sided tape just to get the edges really really nice. Always give it a good rub for a very good bond. Remove the backing. Viewers have asked me about this tool. This is a tool that comes with your silhouettes or, or did I buy it extra? I don't know, but I'll put a link below if you liked to uh, get this one too. Cause honestly, I always use it for this. <laughs> In the middle I'm going to add some regular glue. You can use any type of glue but I like this one because it doesn't wrinkle as much as other water-based glues. I know the writing is about in the middle so I'm going to position this in the middle. Just make sure it's straight. This is of course optional. And now I'm going to cut about whoa, a big half inch, a centimeter and a half around. For the corners, cut diagonally, but stay one millimeter or one sixteenth of an inch away from the corner, you see? So we don't expose the corner, but also don't leave too much or it will be a bit harder. I'm going to pre-fold these edges against the cardboard with my thumbs so that I have a very flush finish later on. I'm going to apply more of this double-sided tape. It's not necessary, you can do anything with glue, but it's just the way I like it. I like clean finishes. Just from corner to corner of each tap, if you want to call it that. Oh! Cutting 
the double-sided tape, I ripped this. Now, these accidents happen, of course, but you won't see it, so it'll be just fine. Let's rub these carefully. Now, this one I'm going to remove very carefully so I don't rip it further. Let's see, yeah. All right. And what I'm going to do is just apply another piece of double sided tape right over there. So, very carefully up to the edge. Right. And this should do it, no harm done. That one. And then, if you like, and I like, very thin, very little amount of glue in on the edge of the cardboard. Fold over and... Just rub against the sides of the cardboard too for a nice flush finish. There. And do that on all four sides. So very little, not too much in the crease against the cardboard. Like this. So you can see still my mistake, but that's going to be covered up. I'm going to cover the inside of the cover with craft paper. Now I'm not going all the way up to the edge, but I'm going to leave a little bit off, like two millimeter or an eighth of an inch, about that. Now since this cover cardboard was five inch by seven and a quarter, I'm going to reduce those measurements with um, a quarter of an inch, if you work in centimeters, reduce it uh, with a half a centimeter. So I'm going to need a piece that's 4.75, like this. See, fits perfectly. And this should be 7, so I line it up with the 7. So, there, no need for measuring. I'm going to glue this part on there with, again, double-sided tape and some glue. And this was something from my previous projects that I wasn't using anymore, but the back is still okay. I'm quite a person that doesn't really want to keep a lot in their home, but as it comes to crafting, I want to keep and hoard everything. I even have clothes left that I didn't donate when I didn't, when I stopped wearing them because I like the fabric so much. So I've hoarded it like 20 years already. Someday I will actually make something with it. Just go quickly with your bottle so you thinly spread it out. That's how I like to do it. Yeah. And then position it completely centered because one's down not going to move anymore yeah that's how it's going to be and there's your cover number one pretty sturdy and finished very beautifully and for the back cover i'm going to do exactly the same so i finished my front and back cover to cover the spine i'm going to use simple packing tape it's sturdy paper packing tape it's wide enough to cover this spine and attach it to both cover pieces this tape is almost two inches wide that's like five centimeters I'm going to cut a piece of tape that's a bit more than twice the height of the journal. To cut tape, I like to use my bad scissors. That's one, two. Now the good thing is it's sturdy, but I can reposition it when, if necessary. And I'm going to position these 
and I'm going to leave a millimeter out. Now just a tip, if you're afraid things might move around when you apply the tape, just position them and hold them in place with some sticky tapes. Normally I would use a, one larger one, but I'm out of those. So I'm going to use a few smaller ones. See, I'm going to do the same on the other side. And this is just temporarily, of course. I'm first going to position it straight like this and before you glue down the rest, of course, remove your sticky notes. Okay, I'm going to go in there with my bone folder in those creases. Carefully lift it up and fold the rest on the back side. Carefully, carefully. like this. And you see, I like to go in there, in those creases where the folds are going to be, with my bow folder, with the edge of my bone folder, and then you can bend the cover very well. And this is essentially the base of the cover. I'm going to decorate it even further. I got these really nice corner protectors. And they fit on here really beautifully. So. I'm going to add this with my little hammer. Pretty. So now I'm going to decorate it further. Here's my cover. I made three signatures. So each bundle is actually just a bundle of pages all kinds of pages and uh, on regular paper or different kinds of paper if you like and they're all a nine and a half by seven inches folded in half and you see i even incorporated some of the free ledger papers that i gave away a week ago i think see there's all sorts of papers some are from our shop uh, ledger papers, but there are also uh, blank papers in a color, etc, etc. And I think each has seven papers fold in half. The way I'm going to put these papers in this cover, I haven't seen being done yet. It could be someone has already done this, but I haven't seen it before. I'm not going to sew it, I'm not going to use elastic, I'm going to use another piece of cardstock. The piece of cardstock that I'm going to use has the same height as the covers, so that's also 7 and 25, yeah, 7 and a quarter, but it's not an inch wide, it's actually an eighth of an inch less wide than the cover, so if I fold it close that the, the cover can still close if i would have made an inch wide piece the cover won't properly close so that's why of course this isn't very pretty i'm going to cover it and i'm going to cover it very easy with my packing tape that i used earlier so and i'm just going to cover one side using my bad scissors again same way as I uh, covered the covers little diagonal snips on each corner leave a bit extra and just fold over There, easy peasy. It doesn't matter if this side has uh, isn't covered completely because we're not going to see that anyway. The next thing I'm going to do is 
Measure. Oh no, measure. I hate measuring. Yeah, but sometimes it's actually necessary. So first I'm going to measure the center. This is the center. Draw a line in pencil. And then I'm going to draw two other lines that are 3 sixteenths of an inch from each side. Just to have them a bit lined up properly instead of winging it. I love winging it, but up to a point. There. And then I'm going to measure one and a half inch from each side to the middle, center, 3 sixteenths of an inch from that side by 4 millimeters, 3 sixteenths of an inch from this side, and then one and a half inch or about 4 centimeters inwards from each side. And now I'm going to take my awl and I'm going to punch holes on these six crossing lines. So little holes enough, you don't have to poke your hole all through. And then I am going to take staples. Yes, we're going to staple these. I'm not going to use a stapler, I'm going to staples themselves. Um, yeah, the tool comes in handy again to separate a few staples. Some staples are a bit wider than others, so I'm just going to use a staple itself to measure my other holes see and I'm going that way you can go can go that way but I think it's going to be a bit sturdier if I go that way so I'm just going to mark a little hole actually it's nothing more than a scratch where the other hole for the staples should go this now I'm going, going through again, not too deep, a little small hole is enough for these staples. Okay. There. That's prepared. And now actually, because those lines are not very pretty, I'm going to erase them. So, and that's why I should do this with a pencil instead of pen. Most of my markings have gone and now I'm going to open this signature and I'm going to punch the holes in the right spot. And to do that I'm not going to measure again, I've done measuring for today. Oh yeah. And I'm going to place this next to the fold here, about in the middle, so, so there's equal extra um, cardboard on each side and then in the fold I'm going to punch the holes accordingly just a bit and when I'm certain I'm gonna poke through like this no measuring we like it so, that's one. I'm going to do the same with the other signatures. Actually, I can use this as a template now. I'm not sure if I'm going to get completely through. Yeah, it works. So, I have three signatures with holes for the staples and I have a piece of cardboard that's covered and has holes. So, first signature, first staple. I'm going to Put the staples through from the center to the outside. And I'm going to do the second one also. Staples through, turn around and poke them through the first row of holes. And these are true. When that's ready, just bend the legs. Here my tool comes in handy again. There. 
and bend your pages a bit because they're not used to being bent this way so there first next signature is fixed and I'm going to do exactly the same with the other two I attached all three signatures to this piece of cardboard and now it's just a matter of gluing this piece in there but I suggest to use the strongest glue that you have because this is fairly heavy and if you're not being careful it might come loose and we don't want that of course I'm also going to add a layer of double-sided tape on here And I'm going to put my glue in here. Don't skimp on the glue here. You want this to stick. And then place it in the middle. Make sure the right side is up. Let it dry thoroughly, of course, before using it. But this way you have a very nice, sturdy, made from scratch journal or chunk journal or um, album or book. You can use your own pages, of course, with three signatures inside. And of course, you can embellish it further Say this is going to be a reading journal. I have some diamond shaped studs here, stud stickers, like this, Ooh, that's pretty. And of course you can decorate it further as you like, but I think this is a very pretty little book made from scratch. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching. And if you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends if they might like this too. Enjoy crafting because it's so soothing and I wish you a very happy day. Bye, everyone.